would be fair to say that many of us, when we think of learning math, we think of things like arithmetic or memorization of facts and procedures or equations. And I actually can't recall, let's see, a time when I would look into my math textbooks and think there was anything there that connected with other aspects of my life. So, imagine my surprise when, one day as an adult, a question uh, entered my mind that asked, I wonder if there's math in what I do? Now, this is truly an interesting question considering that what I do is make rhythm with my feet while I dance. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, just a little bit of dancing. All right. So the style of dance I do is called clogging. It's similar to tap dance. Both are American forms of percussive dance where you make rhythm with your feet. And there's something about rhythm I want to illustrate for you so that you can understand how I've built a bridge between my art form and elementary mathematics education. To do this, I'm gonna talk to you with my feet, and while I'm talking, I'd ask that you listen really closely and think about whether or not the sounds I'm making are gonna make sense to your brain or not. I'm gonna do this twice, and here's the first example. Okay, raise your hand if that made any sense. No? Okay, no problem. Okay, here's the second example. Does that make more sense? Raise your hand if it made more sense. Okay, there's a reason. Now, I hope you're not overanalyzing this too much, but there's a reason. The first example were just parts of my feet hitting the ground, no structure or organization. The second example were similar sounds, but this time organized with something we call pattern. Now, pattern is really the way our brains understand the world, and it's also obviously a really important part of making and performing percussive dance steps. And, as it turns out, pattern is a huge part of math, so much so that math has been called the science of pattern. So, as a teaching artist, I enter the elementary classroom over a bridge built with this idea that pattern is a useful tool both for making rhythm in my feet and for thinking mathematically. But this bridge is also built with things we know about how children learn. For example, there is ample evidence that children think and learn through their bodies. And we know that math concepts can be made clearer through hands-on exploration and experiences and by taking math concepts and applying them in a real-world setting. So that is why I say you can learn math while you dance and you can learn to dance while you make math. You can do both at the same time, and I'm gonna show you how this works. I'm also gonna give you a chance to experience this idea in your own bodies. But to be clear, this is not counting, and this is not memorizing multiplication tables, although these have a role in the larger scope of learning math. This is a deeper math. This is the kind that mathematicians do, where you have a question that does not yet have an answer, and you go about using the math you know to find out something new. And this is how it works. In my program, Math in Your Feet, I help kids make up their own percussive dance steps. To do this, I devised a tool called Jump Patterns, which breaks percussive dance down into three main categories of movement variables. Um, these categories include uh, foot position, so feet together, feet split, feet crossed, your right and left foot. Then we have type of movement, so a jump, a slide, a step, a touch, and also a turn. And then we have direction, so we start in the center of our space, and from here we can move forward, we can move back to the right and left, and also on the diagonal. Now these movement variables are analogous with what in math are called pattern attributes. And attributes are simply a tool for analyzing similarities, sameness, and differences in various situations. Um, and in the dancing we do, we use the attributes to first build our dance steps and then analyze our creative work. The really exciting thing is that kids get it. And I want to show you a little bit what this looks like in action. First, we start out working very slowly through the pieces. And then kids break into teams of two so they can build a pattern of four beats with a partner. Those things, um, then they work to make another four-beat pattern where that is completely different from the first. Those 
patterns get combined into an eight beat pattern. Um, and by the end of their time, they start to realize that each team is going to have an original piece of choreography. I don't think I've ever seen the same four beat pattern twice. And in fact, um, the best thing is, is that the kids are really proud of their work. So for me as a teacher, the beauty of all this is that not only do kids get to experience the structure and phrasing of percussive dance while they learn and use a lot of math, but uh, this, their patterns, their personally created patterns, then become a vehicle for exploring core concepts of geometry. So, um, for example, the first thing that kids hear from me after I say, let's get started, is make sure you're dancing the same as your partner. So in dance, uh, that would be called unison. And in math, the term is congruent. Um, let's see what that looks like in action. So here we have two girls in a moment of time. We know that this is what sameness looks like. They've landed on the same beat. You can see that because their feet are both on the floor. Their feet are split to the right diagonal, um, and their feet are also the same distance apart. And what's even better and more beautiful to me is that their intention is the same. They're headed toward that upper right corner. Okay, here's an example of what sameness isn't. All right, there we go. So I love this picture. <laughs> I love it so much. I know exactly what they're trying to do. They are trying to jump and turn over their right shoulder, 180 degrees, land in the center of their space with their feet together, facing in the opposite direct direction. And the reason I love this photo so much is because it's a perfect example of the perfect challenge this kind of activity provides for children of this age group. Um, not only do they have to coordinate their own brains and bodies to make their ideas come to life, which can take a while, they also have to coordinate their, their moves with someone else. So I have to say, uh, the good news is these boys did beautifully at the final in their final presentations, they mastered sameness. And at that point, what we do is we look at ways to change or transform those patterns using the idea of symmetry. So um, in math, symmetry and transformation just basically means you have an object and you change its position or its size or shape. In dance, we use symmetry to make our choreography more interesting to look at. Here's a beautiful example of reflection symmetry in action. This moment in time, the girl in blue is keeping the pattern exactly the same as it was first planned. We call that the original. She's keeping the original pattern. This moment in time, she's turning over her left shoulder. She's halfway through a 180 degree turn. And she's executing that with a jump. The girl in orange has taken on the role of reflection. And it's, she has to really look at that original pattern and figure out which parts of it need to change and which need to stay the same. In this case, what stays the same is she's still jumping. She's still turning 180 degrees. But this time, she has to turn over her right shoulder. So here we have uh, the action of reflection uh, caught on film or whatever, <laughs> digibytes. So in terms of geometry, um, the, uh, the chance to work through jump patterns and the Math in Your Feet program really affords kids an opportunity to explore space and time um, using all their senses, using their whole bodies, which really helps them build and deepen uh, working vocabulary of spatial concepts, crucial for math, crucial for dance. So, speaking of space and time and bodies, it, I want to give you guys a, a small chance to experience this idea. But don't worry. Please don't worry, OK? Are you thinking, oh my gosh, what are we going to have to do? <laughs> this is a slope floor. What is going to happen? Here's what we're going to do. Um, we're not going to jump, and we're not going to do any patterns, but we do need to stand up. Aha, yes, there we go. Now, don't, don't worry, everybody else is in here, in it with you. Oh, and everybody, okay. So where your feet are now, put your feet right underneath you. We're gonna call that center. And now we're going to orient ourselves from this spot. Let's point forward. So we could move forward. And let's point to our back, we could move back. Um, point to your right, uh, yeah, got it, okay. And point to your left, awesome. Okay, so one more picture. Um, this is a picture of a window. Yes, I know that, our local YMCA. It affords us a chance to look at some right angles, actually a lot of them. And any fourth or fifth grader will be able to tell you that a right angle has just one measurement of 90 degrees. So what I'd like you to do is turn 90 degrees to your right. Oh, good, and now 90 degrees to your left. 
Oh, you're very obedient. Okay, <laughs> let's turn 90 degrees, or 180 degrees to your left. Awesome. And now 180 degrees to your left. And I get to see you again. Awesome. I'm going to make it a little harder, since most of you have adult brains. Uh, let's do uh, 90 degrees to your right. And 180 degrees to your left. Awesome. And people ask me if I could handle a big crowd. I think I can. <laughs> okay, so finally, let's give it just a little harder. Um, this is your new front. You're going to start from here. Don't even look at me. Look at that wall. And point to your new front. And just orient yourself, your new right and your new left. Okay, let's turn 90 degrees to your left and 245 degrees to your right. <laughs> No, just kidding. OK, everybody sit down. <laughs> OK, have a seat. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really awesome. OK, so you know, a little bit of apprehension. And then by the end, you realize, raise your hand if you understood something a little different this time after doing that activity. OK, so what you did is you had a chance to experience the idea of turns, which is a concept that kids consistently report understanding better as a result of sort of applying it to their choreography. And even better, you got to experience math in your feet in a little teeny tiny nutshell. You did what some of what we do. We move from point A to point B and point B to point C. We ask, how are we going to get there? And which way are we going to turn? We connect four individual pieces of time into a larger whole. And once we got the flow of that, we connect our patterns together. And this is the process of mathematicians and scientists and artists and dancers, as expressed through the minds and bodies of typical fourth graders. And this is what it means to learn math while you dance and to learn to dance while you make math. Thank you. <laughs>